Shimai, welcome. So in the last tutorial, we um, collected some information on our uh, from our lightning node to our ESP32, and then we outputted it to a serial monitor. Now the next stage, inevitably, is to get that information and display it on an ESP, uh, an e-paper display, an e-paper module. So today we're going to be doing that. We're going to be extending our last project um, uh, to actually take the information which we get from the node and output it to an e-paper display. You could use other displays as well. There's plenty of different displays out there. I like ePaper because um, it's very low powered. Uh, and with this particular project, we're only going to check the node every minute or every two minutes. So between that, between the time in which it's checking, the ESP32 can go to sleep and then pretty much consume no power. So that's good. As with all these projects, um, I've got a GitHub of this project. Now remember, this is the second part in a two-part or three-part, four-part series um, of tutorials on connecting to your LND node. Uh, so you'll need to complete the tutorial before this tutorial, um, or else you probably will get stuck. So in the last tutorial, like we went and got the, the certificate for our node, um, uh, so we could actually connect to it, um, and, and we talked about getting the macaroon and things. So. There's some things you're not going to know unless you do the so make sure you do the, the the first tutorial which doesn't take long half an hour and then move on to this tutorial um i've also put a reminder in here that the gpio maps for esp32s are all different depending on what board you get uh, i got the node mcu 32s and the dev kit one version one which is generally the two ones i use but i use other ones as well and uh, some of the more obscure ones like the wemos ones their gpio layout is completely different so you'll need to google that google images is your friend here this is the map um, with your, if you use Google Images and then get up your obscure ESP32 uh, 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 GPIO map, you should be able to figure out where each one of these pins go um, because it's using SPI communication. They've all got SPI. Um, so we're going to go and get our code, uh, just like the last project. Um, we're going to be using the Arduino ID again because it's nice and simple and easy. It's got lots of support, which we like. Um, we're going to paste it in there. Now... Uh, in the last tutorial, we just used Wi-Fi Client Secure, so that's just a library to make a secure SSL connection. Today we're going to be using Arduino JSON, so we're going to take that JSON data which the LND sent back in the last tutorial, and we're going to Arduino JSON is going to help us like pass through it to get the data out. Okay, um, Arduino JSON is really nice. Uh, um, uh, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Uh, library, um, but it can be a bit of a pain in the ass because they hard forked. Um, so it's like old versions and new versions, and they're not they're not compatible with each other. Uh, so you'll see here it says it must be version 5.3. Make sure you do that. So once you've installed Arduino JSON from um, include library, uh, manage libraries, you should be able to install it from there. Make sure you downgrade it to version 5.3, which you also do in 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 there as well in manage libraries. Um, or else the code won't work, it'll throw up loads of errors. Uh, it's, a, it's a cool library though, and it's got this assistant thing here, so if you actually get the, the JSON data, which um, we got back in the serial monitor on the last tutorial, and if you plonk it in there, then it will show you, it will give you the code for like breaking that data up, um, so you can like, you know, uh, lock the data up in strings or integers or whatever. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Um, however, the hard fault thing was a pain. <laughs> So we're also going to be using an ePaper module. Uh, so that's the li other library we're going to be calling. We're going to be calling GXEPD2. Um, again, I'm pretty sure you can just include, you can just, you'll be able to find that in the um, uh, the manage library thing, uh, the library manager. Um, yeah, so you just install that, just install GXEPD2, okay? Um, and then plunk that in there. We've got two fonts we're going to be using, like a big font and a little font, so we're going to include that. Um, they should be included in uh, the GXEPD2 thing. Um, then we're going to actually specify what type of, because this ePaper uh, library can um, be used for a bunch of different ePapers, so we're going to specify which particular ePaper we're using. Um, so it's a 1.54 inch, and then there's some custom uh, pins which we've um, had to um, connect to, uh, which aren't in the SPI uh, thing. So if we go, if I show you here, uh, yeah, so um, we've got our regular normal SPI, but then we've got DC reset and busy, and they're not in our, they're, they're, they're custom pins, which we've, we've assigned GPIOs to. So we assign those GPIOs here. So as long as you follow this, 
and then use these then it should be good to go um, we put in our Wi-Fi credentials so the, your Wi-Fi username and password so USB 32 can connect to your Wi-Fi uh, your server so the um, uh, I'm connecting as the last time I'm connecting to the room 77 node um, you'll be connecting to your own node and then you'll need to put in your macaroon credentials here you'll also need to put in your uh, TLS your SSL certificate which I showed you how to get in the last tutorial so please go check that out um, I've got a copy here so I can just paste that in oh to made a boo boo okay um, we make a client from Wi-Fi client secure we um, start the serial monitor which means we can like you know open up the serial monitor in here and we can um, we can send data back from the SP32 to the serial monitor um, we connect to the Wi-Fi okay once it's connected um, it's it assigns a certificate so our um, the, uh, this is our SSL certificate isn't it it assigns that to the client and then the client has it under its arm it goes to the server which is here right um, and then it connects through port 8077 um, it gives it the certificate uh, the it has gets access um, and then once it's accessed it it does a get request so we just put our node credentials in there there we go um, and also in here as well there we are um, and our endpoint as with the last tutorial is version one get info which is this thing here isn't it so that's our endpoint so we could you know if we use a different macaroon probably need to use the use the admin macaroon maybe um or maybe you can just use the is that a get yeah it's a get request so you probably just use the read macaroon um uh and then yeah so you could use different endpoints if you wanted to but we're using the get info endpoint um and then we're validating with our, our macaroon which um it gets from little here now, as with the last tutorial, um, you'll need to figure out how to export the LND macaroon as a string. Um, I'm sure if you're doing this tutorial, you probably already know that. In the Blitz, it's pretty easy. There is a um, uh, just a menu item you can just click on, and it will just generate that for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, thank you, Christian, for that. Uh, and then once it does that the information it gets back it locks it up in a string and then it, the Arduino JSON bit kicks in so we stop our client it takes that string um, uh, content and then uh, it wraps it up in a JSON object and then it can pass through then um, and we can build all our different strings for all the different things we all the, all the bits of information we want so we want the alias which is the name of the node we want how many active channels inactive channels blah 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 once we've done that, um, we're going to turn on our ePaper display. So that's display initialize, and we're going to do that on bound uh, 115200. Um, and then this here is the, the weird funky format for the layout of the um, the ePaper library. Ooh, the ePaper library, how it expects um, uh, the layout for um, information. Uh, so the first thing we do is we fill the screen with white. So we flash it white to get rid of any ink on the ePaper. And then we set the font. Okay, so it's a um, 18 uh, points, so it's, 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 it's a bigger font. We select the text color as black. We pull the cursor down a little bit. Um, we um, print LN, so that's print line U alias. So that'll just print out the name of the uh, node. So in our case, it's room 77, but whatever you call your node. Um, then it's going to sort of set a slightly smaller font uh, at nine points. It's going to leave a space. And then it's going to print on these are all line new line news um, channels and then the number of inactive channel of active channels that'd be like six or whatever backslash and then I put a little minus in there just to show that it's like inactive like inactive channels so that's the number of inactive channels uh, there may be a better way of doing that um, I mean you could just write you could have channels and then you could have like active and then inactive 
um, instead of the minus thing that could work too but it might not fit on the screen peers so that's the number of peers you connected to block height it's block height you're at synced and it's that's a true or false boolean uh, but we're putting in a string um so that's that that's the display bit and then um, it sets an integer at 60 and it sets another integer called microsex uh, which is like 100,000 and then um, we activate the ESP so we enable ESP32 um, uh, timer for wake up um, so you change the number there for how many seconds you want so I want 60 seconds so I want a minute okay so uh, each one of these each one of these is a second so it's 60 times seconds so we've got 60 seconds yeah obviously you could change that for long if you wanted to maybe you'd you don't need your um, module to check your node that often. Uh, maybe you only want to check every five minutes. Then you would just change that to you know five times sixty, so three sixty. Um, no, that's six times sixty, so three hundred. Good maths, Ben. Well done. Um, yeah. Next, after that, so we've we've said this is how we want OSP thirty two to wake up, um, and then we activate the SP thirty two go to sleep function. So it goes to sleep after sixty seconds. It um, uh, um turns on and it runs uh, from the setup again so all this stuff is already cached in there it's already saved in there in the ram um and it just runs it from from the setup again so it's only a simple script uh, this just means you save a hell of a lot of electricity so the um when it's in sleep mode it's like using 0 0.04 milliamps per hour um so if you've got like a 3000 milliamp hour battery uh, and when it's only waking up and using so when it's awake doing a Wi-Fi get request it's like using 30 milliamps per hour uh, so it's using very minimal energy which means you could have a battery you could plug it into a battery and then it would probably run off that battery for like you know a month or two before you need to change the battery which is pretty cool um, so that's pretty much it I'm gonna blur out uh, while I add in my macaroon credentials well not my macaroon credentials room 77's macaroon credentials um, there we go. Oh, um, and then also my Wi-Fi credentials as well. Um, I've got my um, so press the little button. Top if I actually pressed it, wouldn't it? Okay, 100%, 3%, 30, 40, 50, 61, 70, 77, 87. Hey, there we go. And boom, look at that, there we go. Cool. I got my information there. Nice. And there we go, it worked. So we managed to use our ESP32 to communicate to our LND4 node, get some information, then output to this display. I really like this as a project because it means you can have an air gap between, so your lightning node um, can be somewhere really, really safe uh, and secure, uh, maybe not even on premises. And then you can just have this as a little uh, display to, to check on the status of your node. Uh, rather than keep checking on your phone or whatever, it could just be in the corner room, you could put it in a, a frame or something or put on a put an XT TV. And then if there's any outage in your node, then you know because it's going to feed back every minute. I mean, you can joke check on the full node. It also, so like with the, the blitz, I often check the screen to see what its status is. But in order to do that, obviously, I'm exposing the node and where it is. Uh, so I think this is like a, a nice, neat uh, sort of add on module. And obviously, it's not just Raspberry Blitz centric. You could use it for your Noddle, you could use it for your Thundroid, um, you could use it for any, any LND node. So it's pretty cool. I'll have to look at implementing it into C Lightning as well at some point when, when I get a chance. Um, so the next tutorial is going to be, instead of doing a get request to our node, we're going to do a post request. Um, and then we're going to post some information on the server. We're just going to ask, we're just going to post like a number of Satoshis, request an invoice back, and then turn the invoice into a QR code and display it on the paper display. So that's the next tutorial. Um, but, but, for, but for now, um, thank you very much. Um, if you do want to support the show, you can buy... Uh, going to jigawatt.co, uh, details are in the description, obviously subscribe and all that stuff, but if you go to jigawatt.co, uh, i got some products there you can sell, and by buying those products you support the show, which is pretty cool. I'm going like, to add more products over time, so keep checking back in the shop, I'll, I'll probably add some like little uh, project kits related to each one of the, the tutorials I've done, um, and then also, I don't know, some hats or something, or some other, or maybe some socks, some Bitcoin socks. If you've got any suggestions for things you want in the shop, then you know, put them in the put them in the link, uh, in the sorry, in the comments. Uh, anyway, thank you and uh, bye bye.